Hello, welcome to the Craft Stash Live broadcast. I'm Jeanette, your crafty host, and today we have special guest Pete Hughes. Hello! Pete, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. We're so happy to have you here. You well, have no idea. We're so excited. We try to get together, but it's been scheduling difficulties, but we're here now. That's the main thing. Yes, and we have an exciting show for you. We're doing a Christmas in July theme. Christmas in July. We can, we can, you can never have enough Christmas. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, if you don't have a birthday, you got to have more Christmas, you see. And I don't get a birthday because my birthday is Christmas Day. Now, this lady, it's her birthday tomorrow. And Shana, who's working the cameras and everything and the vision, it's her birthday tomorrow as well. How about that? Birthday twins. Birthday twins. Shauna and Jeanette. We're celebrating. Cool. We're working, we gave ourselves a three-day weekend. Good girls. <laughs> <I love that. laughs> Uh, so yeah, let us know where you are watching from. Share this broadcast with your friends. Tag them. Uh, if you're allowed to share in crafty groups, share it there because we have prizes to give away. We do. We've got dyes, bundles, Sizzix yes. yes. Chapter 3 bundles to give away, as well as a Sizzix Big Shot Express, which we're really excited about. Crazy, crazy giveaways. We're going to tell you how to enter all those giveaways in just a bit, but I want to make sure that the broadcast is okay, that everybody can um, see us, and also I'm sure lots of people want to say hello oh, to Pete. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> all right, all right. Pete Hughes is here. I need my glasses. Pete Hughes is here. My birthday is tomorrow. Like, the world is a good place. Ah, oh, fantastic. <laughs> That's lovely. I'm so excited. All right, we've got Jennifer McMullen's watching, Sue Lloyd, Sharon Noble, Diane Williams. Um, Sue Lloyd says, hi, Jeanette and Pete. Maria Husk, hello. Jules Gordon, uh, Tracy Arnold, Jennifer McMullen, Cheryl Marie. Greetings from the Big Apple. What? <gasps> You're watching from New York? Amazing. Jules Gordon. I think I already said that. Jennifer McMullen, Sandy Crawley, watching from Essex. Tom McCormick is here. Carol Sinclair, watching from north of Scotland. Barbara. Barbara is uh, watching from Stockport. Hey, Barbara. Nice. That's where we are. <laughs> so happy to have you guys. All right, so everything is good on Facebook. Going to say hello to some people on YouTube. YouTube land, which we don't want to forget. What an age in which we live. This is fantastic, isn't it? Right? Can you believe it? It's so cool. We have Teresa Calderini watching. Um, Mrs. Stationery and stuff. Laura Pooja. Hello, Teresa Pooja. Hello, hello. Mary Smith. Little Sue, crafty beginner, saying hello. Yay. Wow. Oh, somebody watch. Oh, Teresa's from uh, Florida. Nice. Sunny welcome. Florida. Welcome, welcome. We're so excited for Christmas in July with Pete Hughes. All right, so we have um, some Sizzix Chapter 3 dies. We do. Designs to three. share with yes. everyone. Yes, it's a brand new launch. And it's Tim Holtz. Tim Holtz. Tim Holtz dies with really Tim Holtz dies today. Tim launched them the other day on Facebook. And now we show you what we've done with them. So, yeah. Nice. So we, um, some of these dies are part, actually all the, all the ones we're going to be showing today are part of the giveaway. And we're going to tell you how to enter that in just a bit. So our giveaway today is valued at over uh, 280 pounds. Lots of prizes, lots of prizes. Wow. Plus also we're going to give away some of Pete's uh, creations. Yes. yes He's going to sign them for you. Yeah. Autograph cool. them. Happy days. So you can get a Pete Hughes, original Pete Hughes creation. We're really excited. All right. So let's start off with... Christmas, of course. You're going to be showing us some of these in just a bit. So this first one is the Wreath and Snowflake. Now, I just I want to point out the good thing about these is they work with Tim's dimensional domes. So, which which mm. are going to be coming up in a which second. Which, there these, you go. Yeah. So these, these lovely domes for making. Uh, so you can get small dies which work within the domes. You get the circle words which actually work inside the dome. Oh, look at that as if by magic. So that's the wreath around the dome. You can use that as a shaker card as well. You can fill that with glitter or so on and so forth. And it works with those lovely circle words which you can see inside the domes there. More, we'll explain that as we go along. We, uh, last time we had um, a six guest, uh, Katie Skilton was here and she showed us these domes and we were oh, cool. all amazed with everything that you could do with them very popular so they are available on the craft stash website check those out 
So then we have these beautiful ones, which are amazing. These are the circle words also from Tim Holtz. Yeah, and they were the 24s there on that one. They're super versatile because you can That's use them like that, but you can also use them to get just an aperture in the cart as you're showing there. Or alternatively, what you can do is you're juggling here. Oh, there you go. So you can cut, there's a circle inside it, so you can cut it out and then you can cut around it as well. But they are sized, as we said before, to work with the domes, but they work independently as well. <gasps> it's beautiful. I love it. All right, and then we also have the Star Trim Impresslet. Now, this is a new technology, it's called Impresslet, and it cuts and embosses, but not just emboss, 3D embossing. So it is true 3D embossing, the, the level of detail is epic, the texture you get, phenomenal, that's, wonderful dies. That's little, this one here, huh? this little um, bunting, that's with the Impresslet, right? I see it there. Beautiful. And then you also used it on this one here at the bottom? That's the one. Yep, that's it. So you're getting two thicknesses. You're getting the thin one and yeah, the so thick one. Yeah, so right here along the bottom. Beautiful. All right. So this is going to be one of the prizes up for grabs today, this little bundle. I'll tell you how to enter in just a bit. Let's show the rest of um, some more Christmas designs and also some like kind of a folk Folk yeah, this is as more well? of a folky kind of, kind of theme. Um, the, the top one is Tim's. Oh, this this one I feel the, also has kind of like a... Yeah, it does like very a, much. It's kind of a, a Nordic. Nord it's called yeah, Nordic, Nordic Winter. So, it's very nice. Um, it's not just about the, out, the outside. It's the bits on the inside as well. And we'll show you some lovely cards using the background and also some of the little elements to make a mini card. Another great thing about this is you can die cut it and use it as a stencil. So you can ink through there, you can add your paste, you can add acrylics, whatever it is you want, but very, very versatile. And, and some, there you've used a little itty bitty. Yeah, little that's deer. a cute one. I like it. And then this one too, sorry, keep coming back to this one because you've used... Yeah, we've, a, we've used a lot of the yeah, elements in yeah. there. So we've got the circle words, we've got the uh, star trim and the Nordic winter background. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Is there another one? Is this one too part of this one? Yeah, it is. Yep, it <gasps> sure is. All of those there. So cool. All these cute mini cards using... And I mean, there's a real fashion for the mini cards now. It's really, really popular. Um, oh, this next one's cool, actually because this one was done Thanks. using flitter glue. You know that really <gasps> tacky glue? Yes. So we actually yes. cut a stencil and we put the glue through the stencil. Then we used our gilding flakes. And you can see there, yeah, that's it. it. Once you tilt, when they let the light do its trick, it's phenomenal. It just picks up the light beautifully. And if you use the very great, variegated um, oh, gilding flakes, th those colors, they just mm. jump out at you, but really cool. Have you made these? I have made them, yes. <gasps> All yes, of them? All of them. <gasps> Pete, you're amazing. I'm a busy boy. <laughs> what can I tell you? Oh, look at that. That is gorgeous. I love it. One more, one more. This one as well. Mm. We've got some exclusive demonstrations from Pete. He's going to do those in just a bit. So we are. giveaways, demonstrations. What a great day. And then we have some more um, Oh, folk designs. We don't have any... Um, samples to show you with these but these are gorgeous folk art elements beautiful, now that can work all year beautiful. round as well it's not just christmas yeah. yeah and then we also have a folk art pattern embossing 3d embossing folder i love that i haven't even got to play with that yet you know so whoever wins this they're going to get to use it before me <laughs> I don't this is from courtney chilson which is a former one of my former co-workers that's well yes, from yes, physics yeah. sorry one more shauna this is luna from sophie galar the uh, luna that's, die that's really really cute i've used that a few times last year and i'm itching to use it again but uh have another chance yet really nice really nice my hands are really shaky today yeah i think i've had too much uh, caffeine <laughs> oh you celebrated fourth of july yesterday that's really yeah nice. and also like pre pre-birthday celebrations barbecue. yeah <laughs> All right, so also another prize bundle up yes. for grabs. Mm -hmm. One lucky person is going to get this one. And then last but not least, yes. we kind of wanted to do also have like a spooky treat. Well, Halloween. Halloween. Halloween's coming up. 
So we have do, you know it. do we have any of these to show? No, we don't have any samples of those. Sadly, I haven't made anything yet. They are that fresh off the boat. I haven't even got to play with them. So. But you are going to show us we are gonna one show of them. The crossbones. He's going to demonstrate that, that uh, in just yeah, a bit. Yeah, uh, really, really cool die. So this is the skull and crossbones, and this is a big die. Can you tell us the difference between a big die? Sure, the big dies have a real blade inside, like a knife, a steel rule blade. So that means you can cut things. Sorry. You can go beyond paper and cut. You can cut chipboard, mountboard, greyboard. You can cut any kind of textile. Anything you can cut with scissors, you can cut with those dies. Do you want to show what you're going to be making oh, later? Sure then that way now, they can really kind of cool. see. If you're into mixed media techniques, mm. there are some really cool coming techniques coming up showing how to do the rust resist. Uh, just just lots and lots of fun with it. So. And this is like a thick um, mat board that you've cut with this? Yep, yeah, that's yeah. gray board, yeah. Gray board. Absolutely. So, and that's the beauty of big dies. You can cut so much more with those. Beautiful. Cool. Beautiful. He's going to be showing us how to do that in just a bit. And then we also have Bat Crazy from Tim ah, Holtz. That's a nice one. You can find that on the Craft Stash website. Also, there is a um, Sizzix sale going on, which I want to mention. Sizzix sale, 15% uh, off selected dyes and accessories with the special code. All you have to do is um, type in Sizzix at checkout. So Sizzix, put that at the checkout in your discount code section. Cool. 15% off selected dyes and accessories up until uh, that expires July 12th. So check that out. Next one we have is the Ghost Town. I love this. It's so funny. If you want to see that used to, to full effect, uh, if you go on Tim's website and see, he does a two hour video where he's introducing all the chapter three dyes. There are some spectacular mix with those dyes. There really are. So do check that out. Beautiful. All right. And this is another prize bundle up for grabs. So three prize bundle up for grabs, as well as some cards that um, Pete's going to be making later on. We're going to give those away too. So three bundles. Hold that. Hold that Yay. one, Pete. Hold that I'll one. Hold that one. Hold it. Hold it. And that's another I bundle. Can do that one. And then this bundle. So many dies to give away. Now to, <laughs> to enter the giveaway, I'm going to tell you how to do that now. All you have to do is answer the question, what are you most looking forward to crafting this Christmas season? Mm. So you can start answering that giveaway question. I will read some of those answers as Pete is doing his demonstrations, his amazing demonstrations, which you don't, not, you don't want to miss. Pete is so creative. He's <laughs> one of the most creative people I know. Okay. And I know lots of creative people. <laughs> so you can enter that and then we're also giving away Da, 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 da. Oh, wow! Check that out! The Sizzix Big Shot Express. This is an electronic die cutting machine. We're giving this away on the Craft Stash Inspiration blog, so you can head there to enter to win. You have up until Sunday midnight. So make sure to tag your friends, share this broadcast with them so that they can enter the giveaway. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to craftstash.co.uk forward slash inspiration, and that where the that is where the Sizzix Big Shot Express is up for grabs. Oh my goodness! Pete, Pete's going to be using this machine. I am going to be using so this you machine. Can see, happily, happily, yeah. See it, see it in action. Cool. So we're going to put this away. Let me, um, let me see what people are saying about all this beautiful uh, Let's things. Let's do Because I know they are sharing all their beautiful thoughts. Uh, Laura on YouTube says that she is a bit batty, so definitely needs <laughs> the oh, okay, bat crazy okay. dye. <laughs> That's funny. Pearl Osmond says that she loves Halloween, so it's appealing. All these dyes are appealing to her darker side. Cool. That's my life. <laughs> Pooja says, spooky, spooky. And um, Laura says that she needs to keep everything crossed for the Halloween bundle. <laughs> nice. Let me check in on... Facebook. <laughs> Kim Deer. I'm sorry. Susan Ra Rawlings says, yay, Sizzix. Uh, Elaine Rayworth says, uh, my, what's OH? Does home visits. Oh, it's just home visits as Santa. So I make personalized baubles for him. That's what I am looking forward to most this Christmas. Oh, that's one of our giveaway. Mm. Uh, the One of the giveaway entries. Oh, and Paula Pascual is watching. Yay, Pipi. My, my birthday twin. <gasps> Man, 
Because Cheryl is your birthday twin. You share a oh. birthday with Paola. She has a birthday with me. We both have birthday twins. I mean, she does. That's awesome. <laughs> she says she's watching from her studio. She's oh. watching the super talented PQs. Uh, she always says that. <laughs> I learned so much from that girl. I really did. And continue to. Same. Same. All right. So Pete's going to start his demonstrations and keep entering the giveaway. Enter, enter, enter. If you want to um, give more than one answer, you can. So again, the giveaway question to win a, one of the three prize bundles is what are you most looking forward to crafting this Christmas season? Wicked. All right. All right. Take it away. Take it away. <laughs> well, first and foremost, there's no show without a lovely big shop express machine. This is the electronic machine. Obviously, there's a button which allows it to go back and forward. So it takes the strain out of die cutting. Now, um, before I do that, I'm going to do some inking. I just wanted to show you the machine. So we'll pop that underneath and I'll get my inking mat which as you can see has been through the wars <laughs> this has really been tested to destruction and what i'm going to do is take a white piece of card this is what i'm going to use for my wreath now this is the die this is one of the oh that's so <laughs> wonderful i'm being fanned with a piece of card that's, it gets really really it's warm, warm in the studio it really is it's just we don't want so these are the dies I'm going to be using today. This, this comes from the set. We're going to be using the wreath. We're going to be using this dimensional bow. And we're going to be using this. This is 25. This is one of the circle words. But I'm going to be starting off with the wreath. So let's get some of my inks into shots. So I've got broken china. I've got crushed olive and forest moss, which is a color I've recently rediscovered again. I, I love forest moss. I haven't used it for such a long time. Do you have any favorite colors? Are there any colors that you're going to? Hmm? Yeah, for distressings. Yeah, um, distressing. Evergreen bow. Uh -huh. Peacock feathers. Picked raspberry. Oh, okay. Uh, is there one called honey? I, I should really ask that question. If you were on a desert island, you could only take three colors yeah, that's of distressing. That's, 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 that's a good way of putting it. For sure. I'll let you think about that. You don't have to jump in straight away. Now, <laughs> I'm coming in with some broken charm as well. So that's, ah, oh, that's lovely. There we are. Now oh, that's nice. That's getting the variegation of tone. When you just use one color, it's okay. But when you start blending some of these different, different greens together and blues as well and yellows, if you're working in that green palette, it really starts to come to life. Now, before I do anything else, We'll just put this on one side for a second and I'll take my spritzer. You know, your arm's going to get really start aching if you're uh, um. waft, wafting that piece of car. But it's, it's lovely. It's, it's a very welcome draft. So may I ask about these little sure. things up here? Oh, OK. These were just I, I got these from somewhere. They were, they were like little sticky domes and I printed those on my computer, stuck the dome to it <laughs> and then cut around it's it. It's for the so, colors. Broken yeah. China. Broken china, crushed olive, and oh, forest awesome. moss. So it helps me keep track of them in the nice. studio. So as that you can see, we've spritzed. It's starting to mottle. It's doing exactly what I want it to do. But before I die cut it, obviously, I want to just apply my heat tool. Now, that done, we can definitely bring in our machine. So. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this lovely wreath. We'll place that on there, sandwich it between my two plates. Everything goes through here, uh, whether it be dies, the big dies, or our thinlet or framelit dies. It's always sandwiched between the two plates. So there we are, that's through. And bring that out. And we know that we are guaranteed a lovely clean cut every single time. You know what impresses me most about the Sizzix Big Shot Express is how quiet it is you know, compared to other die cutting machines. It's so quiet. You're absolutely right. I was just about to say, um, <laughs> when it came out, I, I, I was reticent. I must be honest with you. I thought, you know what? It's not really for me. Uh, because he's, we all have our favorites. Um, I, I love, I still love the original Big Shot. Um, but I used it at a trade show for the first time in the Netherlands, going back, oh, when it was launched three years ago. And it was such a relaxing experience, just sitting there, letting the machine do the work. And as you say, it's so quiet. So we'll go through the other way now. What we've done, you'll see, you've noticed, I put 
a sticky note glue. And I found these really useful. Um, you know, if I need to get perfect register of my dies, if I don't want them to slip out, I'll use this note lid. It doesn't leave any residue. That's the, that's oh, the key. Oh, so no washi tape. About, you mm, use a sticky well, wash, note. Yeah, I, I, I tend to use, because you can go to, to a, a pound store or a dollar store if you're watching in New York and Florida. Um, and you can pick these up. Well, peop, yeah, no, people usually gravitate towards washi tape to secure their... Um, yeah. Okay, sticky but I, li I like my washi tape too much. Nice. Can I show this on the close-up, Shauna? So this is using the circle words. Look at that. That's so nice. I mean, this would just make a really nice um, gift tag. Like just oh, pop absolutely. that, just yeah. Pop yeah, that you onto just, a gift. Yeah. You're done. That'd be it's really all done already. I, I actually pre-cut that. I cut it into a chevron at the base. And to get a little bit of depth around the edge, I also used um, some distress ink. Pumice stone and walnut stain, if memory serves. Uh, those those tend to be my, my go-to colors. So let's put those bits off to one side. Now, we've got this lovely wreath, and I want to give it a bit of depth, a bit of dimension, because when you're working against complex patterns like the wood grain, you want this to stand out. You don't want it to sink into the background. So you want to give it a little definition around the edge, and we'll find that that will really help as we move forward. Now, let's take this piece of gray card because I'm going to use the machine once more. But for this, I'm going, to, I'm going to spritz it. Now, the reason I'm spritzing it is because I'm going to use it in my impresslet die. Now, with embossing folders, particularly the 3D variation, it's always best if you spritz the card first. The reason being, it allows the fibers to stretch and it gives the emboss so much more definition. Now, what I'm going to now, we need to pay attention. This is the important bit because with 3D embossing folders and impresslets, you only need one plate. You don't use the two plates as you do with die cutting. So you go onto the base of the platform and just wind that through. But you know, the instructions are always there on the platform, they're on the packaging. So there's no mystery at all. And there we have it. Now, look at the level of emboss. I'll Ooh. pull that up to the camera. There. Yeah, I can, I can. You probably better. Yeah, Let me do I'll it just, on the I'll close just take up. that there. Yeah. There we are. Ooh. Isn't that cool? That's so cool. I don't know why, but it kind of feels like, uh, it looks very metallic. Like it almost looks metallic. Well, yeah, do you know it, what I mean? Because yeah, it, it has so much, um, like the texture is so... <laughs> And it's Raised, like defined, it's it looks like metal. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And if you do it in metals, or if as we're going to, in a moment, use gilding wax, it really, really punches out at you. Now this base card, you can see I've inked around the edge with antique linen and I've used the stamp just with, with pumice stone ink again. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna place it right about there, I think. So we'll use a little PVA or double-sided tape, whatever your go-to adhesive is. And I'm just gonna put that in place. Now, you can see how that, that circle word, cutting it as an aperture, how it really punishes when you put it against the right colored background. Now next, we're bringing in dimensional domes. These are Tim's dimensional domes. There are lots of die sets which have been designed to work specifically with these. And what you get, you get this adhesive backing and I'm going to place that over there now at this point I could add some glitter or I could add sequins or anything if I wanted to turn this into a shaker card but I'm just going to put that over the 25 you can see that there now um, for my wreath take some tweezers I'm just going to put a few little beads on this so you do actually get a die with this set which cuts out the little berries um, it's just that today, time is not our friend. The more time I spend sticking little berries down, the less time <laughs> we have to watch the demos. So That's so beautiful. Needs Love must, it. as they say. Needs must. Um, let's get some larger ones. There. Angela Finch says that this would make a great bookmark without the, the dome. <laughs> like absolutely. just that, yeah. yeah. No, it absolutely would. 
um, and they're great on tags as well. Now this, this looks like a little dicky bow or bow tie, but it's actually the, uh, the bow. And I'm, what I'm doing, I'm using my tweezers to just curl this here. So that's going to give me that extra dimension. Then I'm going to use my PVA, just dab a little in the center there and bring that in there. And that's, that's how we get the dimension in this little bow. It's really cool. Um, and one more, we'll do the other one. Hey, can I show the little uh, wreath close on please the close do, up? It's just so, course, it's so delightful. <gasps> Look how cute it is with just the little berries, the little um, self-adhesive little red gems that he's used. And this, again, is with the Tim Holtz Wreath and Snowflake. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, I've got my, my little bow here. It's so And cute. we're just sticking that together. So there's two parts to this die. There's the bow and there's the ribbons which hang down there. And you know what I'm going to do? I wasn't going to do this originally, but I've made an executive decision. I'm going to stick a little gem right in the center of that bow. Now, before we go any further, let's take some 3D sticky pads and peel two or three of those off. Um, it always amuses me when I do workshops sometimes. I'll say, oh, just use two or three little sticky pads and people are using like 20 of them and we spend half the time waiting for people to peel the back off sticky pads. <laughs> It's, I know, it's true. It, it, would like, it would survive a nuclear blast. It would only be cockroaches and that card left. I'm afraid. There. So we put that now around the dome. As I said, it is sized specifically to work with these circle boards, with um, the dimensional domes. And of course, we want to add our bow to that. Now, once we've done this, there's one more thing. One more thing I want to do. And that is take care of that lovely... There we are, we'll press that into place. Now, remember this? We are gonna have that coming down here, like so. So I'm gonna take my scissors and where do we wanna cut that about here? And I'm gonna cut it into a chevron. In the base, just snip and snip. Then, before I do anything, you know you're saying that it's, it's kind of metallic. Well, what I'm gonna do now is take some gilding wax and this is bronze colored gilding wax and I never apply it directly to the card because I want to control how much I put onto the card so it's always best to use a piece of paper first before applying it otherwise you'll find that sometimes you get big big globs of it which is not nice oh do you know what Jeanette this <laughs> is that lovely mm, it's got orange oil in it can you smell it Oh yeah, that mm, smells isn't nice. That lovely. Well, well, yeah, gilding wax kind of has a strong smell sometimes, but that one smells nice. There you go. Now, oh. so we got this. I'm just going to gently curl the edges there. We'll take two more sticky foam pads, pop them on the back, peel that away. You know, I'm always afraid when I do live stuff that you, you're always going to get that day where you get that one sticky pad where the back just doesn't come off. And you spent <laughs> Is that ages. Today? Is it today? <laughs> no, it's not today. We're lucky. We, we just about got through there. But that, my friends, is that a nice, simple graphic mm, statement. Beautiful. So I'm going to hand that to you. This is perfect. I mean, for feminine, a uh, feminine card, but also a masculine card. That's gorgeous, Pete. Thank you very much. Thank you. I love it. I wish I could keep it. But we're going to give this one oh, away. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are, we are, we are. You know what? When I'm done with the other one, I'll be packing it off to you. There you go. I need to keep the other sample for now, but yeah, I'm sure we can do that. All right. Now, okay. we are, uh, you're going to do one, two more demos for us. So we are. We are. He's just clearing away his little yeah, uh, space. No but uh, I just wanted to let everyone know how to enter the giveaways. So you can still enter the giveaway. Very We're giving cool. away three prize bundles, three chapter, Sizzix chapter three prize uh, die bundles. And to enter that giveaway, all you have to do is answer the question, what are you most looking forward to crafting this Christmas season? Enter away. And also we are giving away a Sizzix Big Shot Express. So the die cutting machine that Pete is using, we're gonna give that away on the Craft Stash Inspiration blog. You can enter up until Sunday at midnight. Cool. We ready for our next demo? 
ready. Yeah, yeah. We're ready. And this one's going to be a lot of fun. This is using my, and I have to hold my hands up here. This is my favorite die of a chapter three release. This is my absolute favorite. I, I love them all, of course, but oh, this, one, this one, this one, this <laughs> one is my favorite. Now, I'm just going to reach down here, if I may, just have a shot, and I'm going to bring in one of these. This is the Nordic Winter Die. This, this is my, this is my fave. <laughs> it is beautiful. It sure is, isn't it? Because, it's, I, it's, you know, when I see a die like that, I, the first thing, I value for money. I think, you know, it's, it's a big deal. If you're investing in dyes, you want to make sure that the, the you know, the dyes that you're choosing are the right dyes for you. And you want to make sure you can get a lot of use out of it. And with this Nordic winter dye, I, I just see a tremendous amount of versatility. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got a rectangle of card here and I'm going to apply some acrylic to this. Now, I'm going to use my brayer. And it doesn't have to be a perfectly smooth. So you can see I'm lifting the roller so I get it all around the roller like that. Now this is a color called Melon. As you can see, it's kind of a warm pink. There, so one thing I always like to say is embrace the imperfection. I like the fact that that is not perfectly smooth because it works perfectly for what we're about to do. Now this is scarlet, this color. It's, it's got a little more yellow in it. It's kind of an orangey red. And we're gonna come from the top. Sorry if this is making a lot of noise, Sharon. It is a noisy one, isn't it? No, I don't think um, it's noisy. Nah. No, it's all right. There you go, so we'll put a bit more there. I, oops, look, too much, too much. I was about to say, never put too much because you can always take it away, but you can, uh, you can always add, but you can never take away. So, very wise words. <laughs> Don't think they're mine though. I Couldn't love be mine. it. I'm loving this. There, so we've got some gradation there going on. And finally, I'm coming in with, this is berry red, very apt for the season, of course. And we're just gonna get a little of that and I'm gonna spread it. And I'm going to flick the roller so that I don't get any blotches or spots. And we're going to come from the top. So I've got a gradation. I'm going it's from it's right to left. There. And that should be, should be ready to go. But before, before I do anything, where would we be without baby wipes? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, an absolute essential in my craft stash. I wanted to show, because you were working with the Nordic dye, but, um, and I, I just wanted to show um, some of the other examples of what you can do with this dye. It's so versatile, because you don't have to use the whole panel. This makes an instant card, by the way. Pretty just much, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Put it on a, a card link, you're done, you're ready to go. But also, you can use the little itty bitties to do. Can I, I show those again, Shauna? Sorry. Because they're so beautiful. And also some people kind of missed the first 20 minutes of the show. So I want to make, show them what they've missed. But of course, you can always watch the replay as well. Beautiful. Okay, now, this is pretty much this. If you spread these acrylics, they pretty much dry instantly. Um, or as near to instantly as we get in the craft world. So I'm just using some walnut. No, this is vintage photo. This is vintage photo distressing around the edges there. There's a and... the that. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm coming in with walnut stain. You see this time I'm not actually using it like this in circles. I'm just picking up the edge. And this will give me lovely contrast when I come to attach this. And I know you can't see this, but out of shot, the lovely Jeanette has a piece of card and she's fanning some cool air my way. And it's very welcome because it does get warm up it's here, very, doesn't it? Yeah, it's very warm in here. Yeah, and I'm sure the folks in Florida say, yeah, tell me about it. Like, <laughs> yeah, not much sympathy coming from that part of the world. Okay, now, this is my background. This is the die. I'm going to place this face down onto the die. I'm going to take my machine, which is our Big Shot Express, which is one of our prizes today. Or no, you go across to yeah, to the Craft Inspiration Blog. No, don't worry. That's right. Yes. Enter yes. until Sunday there to win one of these bad boys. Enter for a chance to win one of those. What a great prize! Now, so there's the cup. 
on the die. Whiz that through. And you know what? As I'm whizzing this through, I just had a horrible thought. Did you forget something? Yeah, <laughs> I forgot my die brush. Now, die brushes were invented just for dies like this. Don't worry, we, we, we can improvise anyway. So, um, because, you know, when you get these intricate dies with lots of little pieces, you need to prop those pieces out pretty quickly. Um, and that's what your die brush is for. So I'm just going to give this a little tap. And hopefully the majority of them will drop out. But that doesn't seem to be the case today. <laughs> oh, the wonders, the wonders of live TV. Yep, pokey tool as well. Do you want me to do that? Is there like another step that you can do while I do um, that? Yep, you know what? That's a good idea. Yeah? Could you do that? Would of you course. Be? Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. That's all good. So yeah, we want to keep these little bits. We don't waste anything. So if I give that to you, Jeanette, thank yep. you very much. Well, that, that leads me then on to can... the next part of our demo. Now I'm going to cut oh, again. Oh, may I borrow the pokey tool? Oh, yes, you do. You will need the pokey tool. You Trust me, you will. Um, so now... I'm going to choose some more of my circle boards. What, what can I choose? Let's take Joy. And let's take the larger of the two circles which come with the set. I'm also going to be using my star trim again. But this time with some metallics. Now, I place that in the folder. That's, that's a metallic card there. And I shall retrieve my wonderful Big Shot Express machine. As before, we take out the top of the platform and one of the plates, and we just use one of the cutting plates with impressors and 3D embossing because of the thickness, just the one cutting plate will suffice. And then we're gonna run that through, set that to one side, because we'll do our next cut. Let me bring in those plates again. Now, again, let's cut from gold. This time we're not doing it as an aperture. We're actually cutting a little ring around that. But as I mentioned before, we want to stop that slipping out of register. So we get it exactly where we want it before applying this sticky notelet, thereby ensuring perfect register as it goes through the machine. Pete, can I just say that I am having the best time because you are? it's my birthday eve and I'm crafting with Pete Hughes. Like my life does not get any better. Wow. I'm really, really happy. Thank you for it's being here. Pleasure. No, it's <laughs> my pleasure. I, 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 say, I say I wish I could have been here on the day, actually, but you probably wouldn't be here on your birthday <laughs> anyway, so I'd be flying solo. <laughs> and that, folks, could be disastrous. <laughs> no now. way. That'd be amazing. Now, there we are. That's the circle cut with the same die. So that's it that's all of our die cutting and we are ready to go now with this make we're actually going to be doing two cards because not just uh, the main card but with all those little bits that we have left over and i don't think of them as leftovers i, I think of the little bits sometimes <gasps> look at that wow you see without my die and that's it, why it folks, makes you appreciate the die brush for sure that's why, folks, you should go to the Craft Stash website and get yourself a die brush um, because yes. it's saved. Well, you know how much time it's saved because what did you spend? About five minutes just on the one die there? <laughs> yeah. Well, a couple of passes I mean, with I, the brush. I, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure, but the die brush might be one of those items that is 15% off with the code SIZIX. So check that out. Indeed. Indeed. Okay, now that's the circle ward, blah, blah, ward, word, attached mm. to the base so circle. So elegant. Isn't it? Can it's I, so delicate. Do you, wanna, do you want to show that to the folks? Yeah, there just look how nice that is. It's a nice little script. Definitely one that I want for my stash. You know, I'm applying a little PVA to the rear of this. You know what? Another thing you could do when you cut this, you could use adhesive sheets, those wonderful sticky back sheets. So it kind of does it all for you. Um, here's my base cut. And you will see the difference that that distress ink around the edge makes when we attach this to the face of that white base cut. And it really makes those colors pop out. You can see the gradation from top to bottom. Um, that's that's really cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Do you know what I love about um, what I've noticed that you also did on this wreath card here is that you went over with the um, what color was this? 
Oh, walnut stain on the yeah, edges? Wal yeah, walnut stain on the edges. Yep. Because me, I would have done like a dark green around the oh, edges. Okay. But I really okay. like how you how you do the, the like a brown. Yeah, well, yeah, walnut stain it, is one of those colors. It makes it colors. really stand out. It's, it's one of those colors that's... Um, it's, it's great. It's, it's very dark. Uh, very rich color. And Vintage Photo is a much warmer brown. So they both have their uses equally. But yeah, when you're using, when you're working with blues, when you're working with greens and reds particularly, using a brown on the edge rather than a darker color, um, yeah, it gives it a little something else. So we've, we've cut that strip. That, now that was our lovely uh, star trim. And we've cut that with two chevrons either side. And now I'm going to take a couple of 3D foam pads place one on the back of my trim. This is going to be a very, very, very simple, straightforward cut. Can I read a comment? It's really funny. <laughs> oh, really? Cher Noble says, Craft Stash, you're going to cause my divorce. Laugh out loud. I need all these dyes now, and I've just bought a ton from you this week. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> Sorry, oh I just goodness. had to read that. <laughs> wow. Funny. There you go. That's, that's our first cut. Beautiful. Now, of course, what about all those little bits? And not only that, we've got the leftover trim. We've got the smaller of the two uh, gold trims. So we're going to be using that. And Are I'm going to dip into stuff? that little pile that we've Should got there. To you. Um, <laughs> there now, where's, where's, my, where's my other base card? Oh, good grief. Do you know what? Anyway. Uh -oh. how, are we, how are we doing on time, guys? Are we looking I good? I think, um, yeah, I think so. I think cool. we're good. Because we're having so much fun, time kind of gets away with it, it does. doesn't it? it? It flies by. So this is a Peter Cora peep blue peep. I can't get my words out today. <laughs> Do you have that effect on people? Is it you or is it just? <laughs> I don't know. We're it's on the third the floor. Maybe, maybe it's, the it's the heat. Maybe it's the altitude. Maybe maybe it's the lack of oxygen. We're on the third floor here, folks. There. Now, let's take let's take my pumice stone distressing and my lovely lovely stamp. Um, uh, do you know what? If I could only get my hands on that darn stamp. Oh, here it is. So I'm just going to add some detail to this background. You can see the wording is already pre-printed on there. And I'll get that underneath, kind of like that. And I like pumice stone. It's kind of a, I suppose you call it a mushroom grey. That's what I like to think of it. If it was, if it was called mushroom grey, then I would be much happier. Because I'm never, never truly happy. But, um... What I'm going to do is take this trim, place it across the base thus, and take my Tim Holtz tiny attacher. It's that wonderful little stapler. And we'll attach it like that now. Because I'm going for a kind of a, an industrial look. I, I want to get that. Um, one of my favorite styles is collage cards. You know, like little collage cards? Yes. So, and I do love using things like eyelets and brads and, and staples and so on and so forth. So that is going to attach to there like so. And again, we're going to use a staple. If you don't like staples, don't worry, use your PVA, use your sticky pads, use That's whatever so cool. it is you like. Now, we've got that there. Let's choose from our, oh, we've got so much going on here. Let's get a nice big So that green. is all the fallout from this card. Indeed it is. Oh, I don't know if I showed a close-up of this one, Pete. This Did is also going to be part of the... So one person is going to win this beautiful creation. It is. From Pete. Pete Hughes. Amazing. Ah. Beautiful. Oh, I've got a lot to live up to now. Right now, let's take a 3D foam pad and we will attach it to the rear. This is for, for you folks who are into fiddly. I like fiddly personally. I like mini cards. I like playing around with little dies. It's a lot of fun. It's too much fun. It's too much fun. And because we use the gradation of the colors, we, these are slightly different reds. You can choose contrasting dye colors. There. So that's the kind of the pink, the melon color, and that's very, very scarlet. Then what I'll do is I'll put another couple of blobs there, and I shall attach two more. Pete, there is a question sure. um, about this card. Oh, okay. Is it an American A2 size card? It is A2, I think. Most of Tim's stuff, it, it's that's that card itself is not A2 size. 
Um, but the, um, the die is but the for But the die, cents. I would imagine, is A2. Now, let's see if it says on the back. It, approximate die cut size is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So, yeah, that's closer to A2 than it is to A6. Yeah. So, yeah, you can cut your card accordingly to fit on, onto your base card. So, not a problem. Oh, do you know what? I think we need a couple of stars on there, do you know? I really do. All right. Um, I agree. I agree. You agree. That's all I need to know. And one more from the little part. And you know what? We've still got lots and lots and lots of bits left over. And that's it. A little bit of PVA da, 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 in the center there. And there. Perfect. Gorgeous. Yeah. How about that? I'll pass that on to you. I love that. That's so beautiful. If I attempted this, I don't think it would look exactly the same. Like, how do you make the staples look so stylish? <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, bless you. You're very kind. <laughs> very kind. But it's too much, almost too much fun. It really, I, I love those little makes. I really do. Really do. All right. So, so we are now getting ready now we're for, getting for Halloween. The Halloween, yeah. Switching gears from our Christmas in July to Halloween. <sighs> While you are setting up, let me read some comments because everybody is loving your demonstrations and oh, the designs. So Susan Foster says the circle dies are brilliant. Um, Sharon Hudson says the dies are gorgeous. Lynn Clifton says the Nordic card is lovely. Um, oh, Haley Nettleton. This is the answer to her to the giveaway. So you can enter to win one of three prize bundles. Physics Chapter 3, die bundles. And the question is, what are you most looking forward to crafting this Christmas season? And Haley has said she's looking forward to making lots of cards with glimmer and glitter. Never get too much bling, girls. <laughs> Cynthia Rodriguez says, lots of ideas. Thanks for this live. I'm ready to start my Christmas cards. Yes, I think, yeah, I'm ready too. I think I'm ready for Christmas. <laughs> Christmas, even though it's really hot right now, but. Vicki Metcalf says that uh, your live demos are giving her so much inspiration for new ideas. Maria Husk says that she's feeling inspired now. Cool. Neat, you have that effect on people. Ah. You embarrass me. <laughs> now, are we ready to go? Yeah, ready. This is going to be cool. This is one of my favorite dies from the Chapter 3 Halloween release. It's a Biggs die. And with Biggs, you the bigger possibilities. Um, this is gray board. Now, you couldn't cut this with a standard die. Um, so, right, it's really I'm going to place that directly on the face of the die. They do have a steel blade inside these dies. And you know, uh, steel blade cutting, uh, Allison is the biggest at least the last time I heard, we are the biggest importer of steel blade in the world. We use miles of this. I've got to get some stats on that. How many miles of steel rule blade has been used by us? <laughs> oh man, I can imagine. You know, one of those, one of those <laughs> wonderful figures where it's like three times around the moon yeah, or something and crazy like yeah. that. Okay, and there you go. Simplicity itself, we're using the Big Shot Express, which takes all the donkey work out of die cutting. So I'll just secure my place there. That's her done for the day, so off to bed. You've worked very hard, thank you very much. Um, and there it is, look how cleanly it cuts those. Now, if you, if you wanted to cut these out of paper, if you were making a batch of things for say a Halloween party, you could do six, seven, eight layers of cardstock. Um, with tissue paper, now this, this is my, my record, with tissue paper, folding <laughs> tissue paper, yeah. just with a simple circle die, which is the simplest die. Um, 118 layers in one page. 118? 118. It's pretty impressive. Layers huh? of tissue. There you go. With, the, with a bigs. Now, what I'm going to do, I want these, I want these bones crossing like that. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take my craft knife if I can find it. I do work in chaos, folks, and I'm sure everybody at home sympathizes with that because you probably work the same as well. So I'm going to use my craft now to just make marks in there. And because I haven't got my craft mat with me, I'm just going to snip those in half so I can layer that onto my 
board now you'll see the board what i've done i've used some die cut circles i've used some of these lovely screw head brads and uh, this is actually a similar sort of gray board i've rounded off the corners and i'm just going to place that there we're going to use a little pva you can use whatever glue you favor whether it's spray adhesive hot glue doesn't really matter because we're going to move on to another piece in a second now this one I'm going to have it crossing just below like that at a slight angle. We have another question for you, Pete. Sure. Um, Laura on YouTube is asking, do the Biggs dies work on other machines? Always check. Always check. Um, some of the electronic machines, they, they're only built to cut the wafer thin dies. Um, check with your on your manufacturer's website. But you know what? Most of the manual machines... They, they they will work they will work with with most manual die cutters out there because you know the thing is the thing is about scissors we've sold over two million big shots and its variants down the years so that's a lot of customers with a lot of big dies so if you're making a machine you want to make sure it cuts the bigs you want to make sure it cuts pretty much everything that's out there otherwise it's kind of like you're cutting out all those people out of the market so so yeah but check check with your manufacturer's warranty but most manual machines uh it will work on now i've also die cut some letters this is an alphabet that uh, i think it's called society it was one of the ones from about six months ago one of tim's and i wanted to write a word i was thinking of doing a room plaque initially but when i looked at my die uh, i thought you know what those those eyes they look like double o's so you're so clever i love it <laughs> so well yeah but it's sort of clever in a stupid blokey kind of way it's like you know we we see the world kind of differently but uh but you know when you talk about creativity doesn't it come in so many sort of shapes and forms um because i know people when i started out college who weren't great draftsmen that is they weren't great at drawing but they were so creative they were so staggering, staggeringly created. Um, it's a weird one. It really is. Now, where the eyes are, I'm sticking a couple of brads through there, like so, just to get that effect. But, of course, it doesn't just stop here. That's pretty cool as it is. But we want to color this up. Now, I've got one. So that's it. All done. You've got spooky. You've got your skull and crossbones. You've got your screws here. And what I'm going to do is paint this with black gesso. And as if by magic, there it is. It's all ready to go. Now, we're going to paint this blue and we're going to do lots of different things with it. But before that, I want to get it looking rusty. And I want to apply the rust just in certain places. Now, you could use texture paste underneath this as well if you want to get that rust thing going on. I'm using um, not texture paste, you know, like the sand paste, the grit. Uh, that's great for adding texture to make it look like real rust but what i'm doing today i'm using this it's a it's a natural sponge which i've dampened slightly so that it's uh pliable malleable call it what you will and i'm going to apply that paint this is english red oxide that's the color so i'm going around the screws you see it's starting to pick out the detail and the definition it's looking pretty cool already now Let's get some more rust going. Oh, I picked up some of the other color there. I don't want that. Well, I could use it. So this is uh, this is yellow oxide. So between the two, we're starting to get a kind of a rust patina going on there. That looks great. It does look great, doesn't it? I'm, I'm not taking any credit for that. It's all about the, the sponge and the paints. Um, um, and have you ever worked with, have you had Andy Skinner up here? No. Do you know Andy? No. Andy is... Um, no, I've heard, I've heard of him. He's, uh, wow, when it comes to techniques, you know, for uh, mixed media and things like that, he's, he's the man. He really is. He's so, so clever. You need to get him up. Um, so a lot of the mixed media techniques that I do use, um, I've borrowed from Andy, but he's a friend. <laughs> so I always give him credit, as I am here today. So um, there's one I saw. We were, we were both on, on, on a TV uh, shopping show once, and not together separately and I, and I just happened to catch it as i was coming into the building 
And I missed it, and I forgot to ask him afterwards exactly what he was doing. Um, so the next technique is kind of an homage to Andy. If I'm doing it wrong, mate, I'm so sorry. I'll get it right. But it, it looks kind of cool. Now, that's the rush. Now, that, that looks okay as it is anyway. But I want to do something else, something slightly different, because you know when you when you paint something and then you do a rust effect on it it doesn't look real because the paint peels away and leaves the rust mm -hmm. rather than the mm -hmm. rust settling on top of the paint so what i'm going to do now is use texture texturizing gum this is what us guys use to keep what little hair we have left in place um and this is going to act as a resist so i'm placing this onto the card uh, in certain key areas, particularly where, where the rust is. Um, we'll come down there, have a bit more here. So it's quite random. You don't want to take too much care and attention over this because if you do, it will not look realistic. And that's what we want to do here. We're trying to replicate Mother Nature, which is pretty hard to do at the best of times. So we're spreading that there and getting it in place a bit more down the side there right that's it it's good to go now that's going to be a resist that's just gonna whatever i paint over the top it isn't going to show Ooh. aqua sky now with this paint what i'm going to do is water it down slightly so i shall take my brayer get that in there and do you know what i'm, I'm spritzing i'm inking i'm getting my brush in. i am multitasking <laughs> so you need another tell your friends tell your friends go to craft session because do you know what we saw a guy today i can't remember what he made but he was multitasking <laughs> a guy multitasking could you believe that imagine how much more you could do if you had another oh. pair of arms <laughs> yeah i know i know well do you know what a good friend of mine said she knew you know just say People say, oh, maybe God is a woman. And she said, no, no, absolutely not. Because if God were a woman, she would have given mothers three arms. <laughs> and I kind of understand that. As a father myself, I understand that sentiment. So what we're doing is we're putting this paint on here. You can see that it's, it's kind of imperfect, but it goes with the whole Halloween vibe. So I've got a nice loose brush and we're going over that with the paint let's get a little more see so less is more you can always add you can never take away make sure you get it to the right consistency and we'll go again that's the great thing about these mixed media techniques and i'm i'm working quickly and you know the more you practice stuff like this the easier it becomes the more controllable it becomes but because it's kind of random anyway it's always going to look good right now one more thing one more thing before we leave that to dry so i'm going to take this is avocado dip this is a lovely green and i'm going to take oh we'll take the sponge again place that there and we're going to drag it we're just going to drag it down the front and that gives us a little more variation in the tone because yeah the blue's cool by itself but when once you start adding things like that it gets it gets really cool uh where did i put my avocado oh, do you know what <laughs> there was me bragging about my multitasking skills and it all goes awry now as we'll drag a bit more down there ah that's looking cool i like it i like it a lot okay now there i'm gonna leave that to dry naturally but while i do we're not going to stand here twiddling our thumbs i haven't brought my ukulele in with me today you will be very pleased to hear so we're going to do something else and i want to show you one of the great things about die cutting um i'm taking this this piece of card just while that dries off there let's put that and i'm going to ink this up using three colors three halloween colors uh, one is called squash blossom one is called canyon orange and one is called colonial blue uh, again my brayer which I use earlier. Are we okay for time, guys? Are we yeah, going yeah, good? Yeah, we're good. Cool. Great stuff. 
Now you see this time I want it I want to get it really random and it doesn't matter if the colors that are on my mat are actually coming into this it really doesn't matter at all because it's about Halloween it's about looking a bit grungy a bit random so that's squash blossom we can even turn that over and ink it like that we can take it directly off the craft mat then I'll take my canyon orange And again, oh, this is the darker color. That's look, that's working great. That's looking really nice. Uh, once more, a bit more. Okay. Oh, I'm liking that color. I really am. Colonial blue. Strange choice, you might think. It's it's a kind of a gray. Um, and they're all all these blues. They're all kind of got names from the uh, going back to Fourth of July. Um, they've all got like kind of um, uniform names like Williamsburg blue, Colonial blue. You know, it's kind of like the uh, it does look the like Yankee, a, like a Civil War. Uh, like, yeah, uniform. like a Yankee. Uni was I can't remember <laughs> which which side of the line it was, but uh, but anyway, there we have it. Now we'll clean that up, and I'm going to take a text based dye, and we're going to come in there. So this is just for the effect. This kind of breaks it up. This is interference. Mm, we'll do it at a coquettish angle. There. Ooh, let me show that on the close. That, that's pretty cool as it is. I know. And that makes a great background as well. That's awesome. And now you're going to do something amazing with this. Even more amazing. Now, let's apply die cutting. I said I put this to bed. I'm, so, I'm sorry about that, old girl. Um, you're going to have to work for your supper. So we'll take out our platform. Because remember, when we're using big size, we do not need the platform. Now, I fold that in half because one of the great things about being able to cut through multiple layers is the fact, and I'll just read from my diary, that you can cut through, that you can do something like this. Now, this is where the head is. And when I slide this in place, I'm not sure if you can see this, the top of the skull isn't quite covered, so the blade there I think you might is showing. I don't know. I don't. It's it's hard to show. It's hard to it? show with the black, but so you you have to take me on faith, there. I'm afraid, um, but I think I think we've learned to trust each other by now. <laughs> so we'll wind that again through. Not wind. We shall let the button do the work. It's through the machine. Now that's cutting through both layers, and what that allows us to do. Let's put our machine away. This is, I promise, the last time you should be being used today. Slide that into place and away it goes. Now, back to our die. You see here where it's flat? That's where it was folded. That's where it didn't quite cut. Because what that does now is gives me that. So you can use that. You can, you can say like get a goodie bag, you know, like a brown paper bag. You can, if you're having a Halloween party, you can use this over the top of the bag. You can slide it into place and with a staple or something like that. Or you can get a few of these and you can make Halloween bunting. How about that? Could you see these hanging from a string? And you can do that with all your big styles as well. So you, these are double sided. Uh, there's so many where you can do them as place settings where you can stand them up. Wow. Endless, endless. But we only did that to take up time, although it was a pretty cool technique, while, while this dries off. Now, that is bone dry. The next thing I'm going to do, of <laughs> course, funny. that was funny, is I'm going to rub away. Remember where that wax is? So you see how it's working as a resist. See how it's showing the rust beneath. And now this rust is starting to look like real rust. This, that random pattern that we made using our, our hair wax is actually making it look realistic. That's it's making so cool. it look like the rust has eaten through the paint rather than putting the rust on top of the paint. So there we are. We're gonna, we're gonna just take that away there. That's looking pretty cool so far. Um, but there's one other thing, quinacridone gold. Have you heard of the wonderful quinacridone gold? No. It's yeah. It's it's a it's a it's a paint color 
and but the, the, it's it's quite a transparent tra so I'm working with an American and I'm saying transparent of course if you're in the UK it's transparent if you're over the pond it's <laughs> transparent so there you go I was making the, the adjustment there um, so I'm gonna put a little bit of the and gold there and I'm gonna spritz to water that down so you see it's kind of like like a stain like that and I'm gonna put this around the screws I'm gonna put it around where where the rust is and okay it doesn't look like much now but again you have to you have to trust me that this is gonna be cool in there um, so let's put that over the rust over those areas and then we're gonna go we're gonna spritz now this is gonna drip down because that's what rust does it drips down and this is going to create a real really cool realistic that's so cool it is cool but you know what we're not going to wait for that to dry we're going to show the folks the classic one we made earlier um and that's what it does it drips down and you can see i've used a tech stamp over the top but again to lift up some of that color uh, it's a great we put some string on the top so you could hang this from your front door it could be part of your Halloween deco you can put the name the name of your house or whatever or your, your kids name it's just a cool technique and it's a lot of fun you know what I love about your demonstration is that when I first saw this I'm like I can't do that that I don't even know where I would begin but you just broke down the there steps it's so easy you've encouraged all of us I think cool Thank you, Pete. No, no, it's a pleasure. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. It was fun. Amazing. So, our time here is drawing to a close. Oh, what a shame. I know. It's gone we so had, quick. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. We learned a lot, and we you've inspired us all. Oh, I hope so. Um, so, we have our winners to announce for the Chapter 3 prize bundles that we have. So excited. Plus, we're going to be giving away all these. Cool. Yeah. So everything that Pete made today, we're also going to give away to four lucky people. All right, but don't forget that you can still enter to win the Sizzix Big Shot Express that Pete was using during the demonstrations. You can win that up until Sunday midnight on the Craft Stash Inspiration blog. So make sure to head there, enter the giveaway, share with your friends so that they can enter as well. And don't miss out on the 15% off of uh, Sizzix selected dyes and accessories using the code Sizzix at checkout, which expires July 12th. Okay, time for our winners. Oh, turn the drum roll. Yes, please. All right, so our first winner of the Christmas bundle. Sorry, wait, that one's that one. Sorry, I got my bundle oh, confused. Thank you. Oh, hold on. Oh, <laughs> so first bundle. winner is Maria Parker. She's looking forward to crafting for uh, her Christmas table as she's totally changing it this year. And she's definitely getting some ideas while she's watching the live broadcast. Well done. Hooray, Maria Parker. All right. Second prize bundle. That one with the folk. Okay, let's, let's, see, let's, yeah, let's do a drum roll and hold the bundle. <laughs> Not as quick. Oh, you're doing the, the two. That's oh, what I do all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Oh, Joanna Otway. She's yeah. looking forward to making Christmas cards, home decor, and sharing her inspirational makes with her craft club. Amazing. Well done. All right. And our last one is the spooky bundle. Oh, here you go. Can you hold that for us, Pete? Thank you so much. And the winner of the Halloween Physics Chapter 3 bundle is Mommy Tamario. She's looking forward to making shaped Christmas cards as she usually uses big dies for the base of her cards. Every year I usually just make A2 size, but I'm branching out and getting real creative. Fabulous! Yay! Now the cards that were given away. Oh! That one. That's gonna be for drumroll! This is stationery and stuff. She's most looking forward to crafting her Christmas album. She's making one for her mom with photos of her children. Cool. So we'll send that off to you. Fantastic. Oh. One more. Are these together or separate? Oh, oh yeah. Um, together. Oh, sorry, okay. Sorry. Together. Together. There you go. We have Jillian Ashraf. She's looking forward to making 3D Christmas tree cards. Well done, Jillian. And the last one, which is this card. 
Suki Gardner. She's looking forward to making Christmas cards this year uh, in time. Last year was very last minute, although I'm attempting to make some stationary card sets for family as extra presents. Nice. Nice. Ambitious. I love it. Well go. done, winners. You can send us a private message via Facebook. Uh, with your mailing information so that we can send those prizes to you or you can email me Jeanette at craftstash.co.uk with your mailing information and I can get that to the right person. That's Jeanette, J-A-N-E-T-T-E -T -T -E, at craftstash.co.uk. Thank you so much, Pete, for Oh, it's been a pleasure. Here. I've been really looking Love forward it. to it. Uh, I hope the folks enjoyed it. I know I, I They have. did. They did for sure. And also a big uh, shout out to Shauna, my birthday twin. Happy birthday, Shauna. Happy birthday to us. <laughs> Bye, everyone. See you Bye. next time. Take it easy.